Hey, what's going on guys? Kalamaz here, and today I want to talk to you all a bit about dinars, or the new bullions, which are essentially dinars. In Season 4, items might be targeting early on, look at a few sims, and talk about, I guess, the current state of Warlock gearing heading into S4. Now, I want to say off the bat here, it really, like, all this depends on what you require by running the raids first. If you require a 9 staff, for example, you might not need to get that from the Dinar vendor. Uh, at the same time, tuning is still going to come a bunch. Things might change. We don't know the number of dinars or bullions you can actually have in S4, but a lot of questions about what's going on with it. What do we want? All that kind of stuff. So I want to highlight it today. Look at some initial sims. Look at trinket comparison, trinket comparisons, all them. And let's go from there. Like always, we can watch add-ons down below. The links and links to Twitch and Discord if you want them. They're all for free for you guys. And uh, yeah, let's get it going. Alrighty, so I'm at the at the uh, bullion vendor on PTR. Uh, the vendor here is of all the incarnates. Here is uh, Abaris, and here is a mirror cell. Now, as far as items are concerned, off the bat, like I said at the start. This depends a whole lot on what you require from the raid clears, right? Now, Vault will be up first, we assume, for the weekly rotation of, you know, empowered raids, or whatever we're seeing in 10.26 and S4. It should, it looks like it's going to rotate one a week, like it happened, like what happened in S4 of Shadowlands. So Vault will be up first. Now, Vault contains the most rare item that you actually want to acquire for S4, but if, for example, if you go in and you loot an Aranog ring, uh, it's a very good option as one of your first scenarios. Probably not the best, but one of the best ones out there. However, if you loot it, that will, you know, unsurprisingly, it makes sense, eliminate that from what you want to spend your dinars or your bullions on, right? Uh, the bigger items here, though, as far as, like, taking into consideration rare, uh, them being rare and also being powerful and all that, uh, in Vault are going to be Darina's Chosen, which is the Aranog Ring, uh, Whispering Incarnate Icon, which is a very, very good option for one of your first bullions to be uh, used on, and Seal of Filial Duty. Now, it comes to, like, uh, Razzia Dagger, some trinkets here and there, off hands. They're not bad, but there are better options, uh, whether it's like, you know, another, you know, off hand, another, you know, uh, weapon here and there, or just things like, things like that in general, right? Uh, now, I have Sims we're going to look at here in a minute to you know, compare and contrast them all, but as far as those three are concerned, uh, Incarnate Icon, Darren is chosen being the damage based version of the Rare Ring and Filial Duty. Now, Filial Duty is actually really strong. At Awakened 14 out of 14, I think I have it on here right now, it gives you a 262k shield whenever you do fire damage, which as Demo and Destro, very easy to do. Not whenever, but chances to do that, I'm sorry. But Demo and Destro are dealing fire damage very often, and Affliction can do it via your Eyeball proc in your Clash Tree, Inquisitor's Gaze, or by doing by playing Shadow Flame uh, embellishment, right? So, uh, either way, this ring is very strong. In this key we did here, uh, healing-wise, it was, uh, let me see, it was 13% of my healing. And I cast Dark Pack a lot in Mythic Plus. Um, so, uh, it's very strong, as you can see. Now, if you're looking at more damage-based effects, I mean, you're looking at Incarnate Icon and Darren Chosen, but these two are likely the biggest uh, frontrunners in Vault. Uh, but, expanding from there, heading into Avarice, we have other options. Now, the one big one here everyone's going to see is Clash Trinket. Uh, Clash Trinket, you've also got things like Voice of the Silent Star, which is actually a rare item. I forgot that it was rare. It drops so often for us in Vault or in Avarice, but your options here realistically are Voice of the Silent Star being Sarkareth Cloak, highly highly sought after by everyone, or Clash Trinket. Uh, now, Clash Trinket was very good for Demo in uh, Avarice because you had Pit Lord, you had Ram Tyranny Tyrant, you have Power Infusion, Potions, uh, Augmentation stuff at some point as well. Um, lust or whatever being worked in, all the stacking value of these effects being combined together, right? Your tier bonus giving you that insane damage profile, the huge boom can ramp back then, right? But when that was broken up in later S2, when they nerf Pit Lord tire interactions, when they basically redesigned Pit Lord, uh, nerf PI, nerf tier set, all that, it lost a lot of value, right? Now, Clash Rank is not terrible. But we'll look at Sims here in a second. It's actually not as strong as it may seem and not a front runner. Uh, spoilers ahead for any spec, actually. So while it might seem like, yo, Trinket's insane, unless things change in Sims, which, which they might, um, it's not looking to be incredibly impactful. Keep in mind as well, right before 10-2 dropped, they ended up cutting the intellect per stack in half, but increasing the duration from 10, from 10 to 20 seconds on this effect. So you get like basically twice the duration, but half the intellect value per stack. So it's almost a wash, but like, you know, uh, a bit of give and take there, right? 
Voice, on the other hand, this cloak is very strong. We know it is no stamina on it, but I mean, very strong damage wise. Everybody in the, in the raid wants it basically. Um, just strong effect all around, uh, giving you 2300 secondary stat whenever it procs, only sucking a little bit away from somebody else. It's a good effect. Uh, strong cloak and it's rare. And keep in mind, these rare items, I mean, the raids are rotating uh, every week. You don't have all three open at once. So, I mean, if you go through, for example, and get it from your first clear, you're lucky, you know, one person out of your whole raid to get it. Great. Awesome. You can save your bullet and something else. But voice and clash trinket being the front runners here for the most part. Other notable trinkets, chromatic essence is solid. Might see a little bit of play here and there. Vessel wasn't terrible, but with having all three raids open, better options. Uh, Beacon or Bacon to the Beyond is not bad either. It's similar to Baloros. Baloros, however, is a, a baseline intellect trinket versus this being mastery. And Baloros is a little bit more damage. I think it's like 800k versus 751 here. And also Baloros being a two minute cooldown versus, you know, two and a half, right? Um, moving on from that, we have Amir Jassil, uh being the dream render here. Now, there's some items here that are very strong. One of them is not rare. It is Nine Buse Unraveling Spindle. In current Sims, this looks to be the play for basically every spec. I'll look at Sims in a minute here again. Um, it's good for Demo, good for Destro, and good for Aff. Now, Destro and Aff want it more than Demo. I've seen Demo Sims playing this in Incarnate Icon. I've seen some playing Boloros in Incarnate Icon. But regardless, the trinket's still very strong. Good single target raw damage whenever you use it. Mastery buff, and also baseline intellect. However, it's not rare, right? But it is a very strong effect and is worth considering depending what you get with your first few bullions. Uh, outside of that, you have the rare neck, which is honestly probably overvalued. Um, the effect's pretty minuscule. Nowhere near what, what uh, their inner ring gives you shield wise. But the big thing here I want to hit on is actually Dreambinder, Loom of the Great Cycle. Sure, Baloris is here as well, and it's fine in certain spots, it's strong, but Dreambinder is very strong because we're not playing Augury for Warlock as any kind of rare item anywhere, not really worthwhile trinket. You have this staff here, but Dreambinder, we don't have Iridol next patch. Dawn of the Infinite is around, Hard Mode will be there, but you won't have it in the M plus cycle. And eye level matters a whole lot on weapons, right? It's big intellect, increase, all that kind of stuff, major intellect, major secondary stats. And the on use for this staff is not bad. It's very similar to what the on use brings from Iridol, in 10 2, just Iridol is that, you know, strong focused amount of damage, basically when a target's low on health versus just being, you know, sort of pop it on cooldown, does some damage, and that's that. But it's a baseline extra bit of damage, added effect, with no uh, lessening of intellect or haste mastery that we get on other effects at times when you have these damage unused effects on items, right? Now, weapons we know are very, very strong, um, like at higher eye levels. And if you can get one early on, whether it's through crafting or whatever, that's typically your biggest damage increase. Now I have a handful of Sims here we're gonna look at. So uh, I'll differentiate whenever we look through each tab here, right? But the first tab in all these Sims, I'm using a, a new tab to, to separate them all spec wise. I'm old, give me a break, it's whatever. Um, these are our initial Sims run by the Lock Discord and things, Malakath and everybody else is maintaining them. Uh, I think Summer is as well, as of ours, which is great. Awesome, thank you for all the help with that as well. Smarter than me. Um, I've run Sims here. Um, a, a bit more value was found than them when I ran, I guess, my own Sims here or whatever, but I ran some, uh, taking the same profile they used, but putting in different talent combinations and simming trinkets here as well, right? Now, for Demonology, I got roughly 382970, which is about the same what they got, 1,000 DPS higher, give or take. Um, the big thing here, so I went through, people are asking, Incarnate Icon, um, is this with tank, DPS, and healer secondary stat increases, or is it just DPS? So, basically, the second tab here in each spec i'll once again be sure to highlight it is dps only incarnate icon right so this for example for demonology 382970 is a dps only incarnate icon now demo is the one spec where incarnate icon is not necessarily as high as i've seen as like um well af and Destro. uh incarnate icon is very good but if you're playing it with just only a dps buff on it basically just you you know, being a warlock, right? Um, the highest overall iteration is about 1.7k DPS behind the highest overall iteration, which is going to be Baloros and Naimu. Um, same as what we're playing now, give or take. However, if you factor in the actual tank, D or tank DPS and healer effects from Incarnate Icon, it pulls ahead. And the highest combination overall uh, is going to be Incarnate Icon and Baloros for Demonology. Demonology is playing Blue Silk and Lining in both spots here, depending on uptime. 
but you're also playing during a chosen ring here, which is a baseline fire effect. Demonology, destruction can do fire damage very easily. You don't need Shadow Flame to proc that. Affliction, however, when we get to it, does. Now, uh, besides that, I also ran a couple sims here looking at different talent builds, like Ring of Tyranny with Vile Fiend with Soul Strike, trying to find some value there, seeing if it was better with Clash Ring and things. Uh, so they're actually in here, scrolling down a bit. Uh, we have a combination of like Naimu, Beloros, uh, Incarnate Icon, Beloros, Incarnate Icon, Naimu, all kind of stuff. Uh, Umberlisk Fractured Heart is pretty str uh, strong from what I've seen. At the same time, both Tome of Uncivil Power is, and they're both from Azure Vault, which, you know, probably just overvalued a bit, I guess overstated. Uh, damage wise we'll see where it goes you have like uh Razieth tome here but a lot of damage to yourself you know. clash rank sitting here not terrible and keep in mind this is playing the two minute build as well and this is the highest iteration of clash rank i've seen for demonology um two minute build the theragans called the dominance and nine you spindle scrolling down more you'll start to see other builds this is the highest ram tyranny build here which is essentially playing uh nine mu and Beloros. Uh, about 7,000 DPS worse, playing one sack, souls, uh, ring of tyranny, all that. No, uh, it mother, one sack, with all that instead. About 8k worse, give or take, than the baseline two minute build. This build here being about the same, uh, playing nine mu and Beloros compared to, I think, nine mu and uh, Karnat Icon, whatever. But point being, ring of tyranny still not as strong, unfortunately, as the baseline two minute build. Scrolling down more, more combinations here and there. Uh, a vile theme building here somewhere as well the farther you go down, but TLDR, for those that are wondering about Ring of Tyranny, some builds even had uh, Umber Blaze in them when I sim them. Just not as good as two minute build. Uh, unfortunately, just Tyrant with its synergies being broken between uh, Nether Portal and Imp Extensions and all that, and, t and Pet Extensions, just a, a cap of Imps on it. Just not as good, honestly. Uh, Tyrant was over nerfed and honestly just not very good. So hoping for tuning coming to Tyrant, Ring of Tyranny or whatever. If you enjoy that build, hope for tuning. If you like two minute build, well then hey, you know, it looks to be good next patch. Uh, and there is that. Now, keep an eye on uh, I guess similarity similarities between each spec here, item wise. Um basically every spec is playing Dreambinder. I'll show you here spoilers ahead. Dreambinder, Dreambinder, and Dreambinder. Uh to a similar extent, every spec is basically playing uh, an empowered incarnate icon. Um actually going ahead here to to uh, to, to AF, good god. Lord of Mercy. Uh, <laughs> going ahead to AF here, this is the unempowered AF sim, only playing the, D the DPS version of Incarnate Icon, not DPS healer and tank. It is the highest combination with Naimu uh, at 3 iron 3 7 5 8. If you factor in full on DPS tank and healer, you gain about 3k DPS and it's ahead by a lot more, ahead by about 2.5k, give or take. And you can see it's ahead of another Incarnate Icon combination, right? all incarnate icons when being fully empowered versus like the other one being you know some icons and a mix of like Beloros and Naimu uh fully empowered it's all icons so I mean TLDR for AF get an icon just play it doesn't really matter you know if you have like full tank healer DPS or not it's just straight up good right um similarities to, to, to uh Demo here both playing Cloak Silent Star uh AF is playing both rings here filial duty and darina chosen AF playing one shadow flame one blue silken lining shadow flame to proc the darina ring needs to be fire damage so it procs it there uh filial duty is not being played by, by demonology uh, it's playing this ring from rashok over it realistically if you can get filial duty it's probably pretty close to this ring and i would likely play it for the huge shield that it brings um if it's anywhere near what this ring can do in sims right um the similarity is there both playing Dreambinder, both playing silence or cloak uh both probably essentially playing both rings or in a chosen and filial duty uh and both playing well you know basically uh spindle if not very close to it uh but both playing incarnate icon for sure so keep that in mind when you're looking at like you know what do i want to what do i want to buy first potentially depending on what you get right uh moving on from there so we have the maxed out afsim here being 386 5 roughly maxed out demo being 383.4 uh we have destro now destro this is going to be the dps only incarnate icon sim not dps tank healer uh incarnate icon and naimu with two minute build are indeed simming the highest here uh i know just to clarify as well for af i go back a minute here i did run sims like some weird sims playing uh like playing like double male malevolent visionary double like uh Soul Eater's Gluttony, just to see if you can get some weird value out of, like, Clash Trinket. Uh, they're pretty far down somewhere in the sim. I forgot where it even was, but it wasn't worthwhile. Um, you're basically just playing 
they're in here somewhere. But you're basically just playing uh, like the normal build. Gluttony, Dark Lair, Haunt, Crescendo, and that was it. Unfortunately, Clash Ranker for this build, even when I played like Visionary, it was okay, but Gluttony beat it out. And with playing just Gluttony, Clash Ranker is sort of mediocre. About a 10k DPS loss compared to like playing Incarnate Icon uh, and Spindle, right? Getting back to Destro. Uh, Destro sitting at 411. A pretty big jump in raw damage compared to Aff and Demo. It is playing Soul Fire and Combustion. I'm not going to play Soul Fire. Might play Combustion. We'll see where it goes. It is pretty strong with more haste and all that. But uh, right now, similarities once again. Uh, Cloak, Staff, both rings, Incarnate Icon, and Naimu. This is also the just pure DPS version of Incarnate Icon. Not with DPS tank and healer factored in. Um, sitting at 411. You factor in tank and healer. You're sitting at 413.4. And it's ahead by, well, essentially even more. Once again, basically a wall of Incarnate Icons and X. Now, these three-minute single-target sims here that I have for Destro, uh, like three-minute ST, all this stuff here, this is playing the, once again, the Double, double Burn Dashes profile versus, like, the Grand Warlocks design profile. Now, fights may vary. Like, for example, this build here is behind by, I mean, essentially, like, depending on how you want to look at it, this build's behind by... Uh, 700 DPS roughly compared to this. If it's like a three and a half minute fight, chances are high this build would beat out this build here playing the two minute version of Destro because you're getting two Infernos regardless when it's at 330 duration. But one has double burn ashes being this build here with two full Infernals compared to two minute build having one point in burn ashes and you know essentially like being half a minute off your next Infernal. Either way, fight duration depends a good bit, but factoring that all in, right? I wanted to run Sims here to try and see where Iridius Fragment fell with Clash Trinket and everything else. Uh, the highest like Iridius Fragment Sim here is sitting right about here um, with Whispering Incarnate Icon. Not being terrible, being one of your better options when it comes to the three minute build, right? This uh, this build here just straight up being Incarnate Icon and Nine Spindle, which is interesting. Uh, but once again, duration dependent a good bit. Uh, it might be an option to play Iridius Fragment with Whispering Incarnate Icon if a fight is like three and a half minutes long compared to being, you know, four and a half, whatever, what have you, depending on how you want to pop trinkets and cooldowns and all that, right? Now, as far as Clash Trinkets concerned, again, uh, the highest Clash Trinket sim that I've seen in here combining, you know, two minute and three minute, you know, uh, talent builds and all that is sitting right about here. Uh, Incarnate Icon and Neltharians Call the Dominance. Now... I haven't been able to dump all eight Chaos Bolts in the 20 second window that Call of the Dominus gives you. Um, it's surprisingly mediocre, but that's how it was last patch two for Destro, right? It wasn't that good. Uh, it was a 10 second duration versus 20 back then, um, or now at least. But uh, honestly, the Clash Trinket Iridius Fragment combo wasn't even in this sim. Um, I dug, dug a good bit for it and it's not even here. Uh, combination wise we can scroll through all the way if i missed it for the last 10 minutes digging here you can point it out i saw it earlier when i ran this sim with different parameters it was like a 25k dps loss compared to being the highest overall combination like here's the three minute version playing uh, incarnate icon and nothing else called the dominance once again it might change a bit based on fight duration and all that but honestly there's not a whole lot of clash trinkets in here so for destro clash trinket looks Honestly, pretty mid. Here's Clash Trinket and Naimu. Uh, for Demo, Clash Trinket, honestly as well, looking uh, pretty mid. There's one here with Naimu being a 6k DPS loss, and that's even like better than playing a Ring of Tyranny version of it, which is, you know, down here somewhere. And for Affliction, I mean, like I simmed Malevolent Visionary with no points in Gluttony, just seeing how Soul Rot felt, but like losing your tier bonus, which is Soul Rot based, essentially getting it half as often, not playing Gluttony, just not worth it and visionary added more value to clash trinket but without visionary it's just pretty mediocre uh i even tried builds without haunt and crescendo playing double visionary double gluttony and honestly like with all of them being in here it was still about this much of a loss 10k 12k so clash trinket unless things change or some will some weird build emerges is looking actually very mediocre um next season so if you didn't like it last season great probably not gonna be around if you liked it well you know unfortunately probably not looking the best so the similarities across all these sims and iterations here, which once again, all may change. Uh, basically, all of them are playing Whispering Incarnate Icon. The one like little caveat to that is like Demonology, which is not playing, technically not playing Incarnate Icon, but it's very close to being played when it's only empowered by DPS. Once again, when you factor in DPS, Tank, and Healer, it is your best combination for Demonology. Incarnate Icon, Valoros, to a similar extent, Affliction, uh, Incarnate Icon, Naimu, and for Destruction, 
Incarnate Icon, and Naimu. So you've got your Incarnate Icon and sort of Naimu basically being everywhere. Naimu not being, being bad for demonology either. Almost also, you know, pretty close. Um, so Incarnate Icon being a very high choice here. Uh, to a similar extent, Dreambinder being a very high choice here as well. But for example, if I looted, you know, a max eye level staff, like the one from Taros or whatever, super early on, like uh, this one here, Taros's Captive Core, whatever it's called, this thing here, um, you might want to say Dreamweaver looks really good. It's a weapon, rare effect, all that, but I don't have an icon. If my raid is stacking icons and trying to build those huge tank healer DPS groups early on, you know, in Faded, it might be worth getting an icon first over a Naimu staff, right? Which is also, well, you know, rare. Uh, to a similar extent, if you're lucky and loot maybe like uh, an incarnate icon early on and you have a good weapon, it might be worth saying, hey, I'll pass on Dreambinder and buy a Voice of Silence Star early on. Or maybe an Aranog ring, right? Um, from, you know, Vault, right? Because Aranog rings about, I think, 2 to 2.5% two of your damage overall playing, you know, fire-based builds and stuff, which we are as a Warlock for every spec, right? So the four, like, I'd say biggest items now, which you all change once again, tweaking and tuning and all that kind of stuff being factored in, right? Uh, Incarnate Icon, in no particular order, maybe favoring for like one and two or more, probably like Incarnate Icon, followed by Dream Binder, depending on what you have weapon-wise. Once again, two and a staff on each effect, pretty good. Uh, and then you have like, like honestly, Nymu not being rare, being a good option. Uh, and then also like, obviously, Aranog Ring uh, being here, Sarkareth Cloak being rare, and basically everybody wants one. Then also there in a ring being good. No damage increase, but a very large shield for higher end fights, higher end plus, whatever, what have you. Also keep in mind, buying other items like, I don't know, like, like random stuff, like, uh, I don't know, like, you know, chromatic essence might not be terrible in certain builds, but at the same time, they're not rare, not as, I guess, sought after as other items. And, uh, well, it's gotta see where it goes. But TLDR, that's what I'm eyeing. That's how Sims look. And, uh, We'll see where things go in the next few weeks. So thanks for watching, guys. Wraps it up. I hopefully answer any questions you might have had about Season 4. Uh, early Warlock gearing, early Warlock Sims, builds, and all of that. Now, like I said at the start, these builds can all change. Likely, very well may change for S4 hits at the same time. Uh, trinkets and gear tuning might come. Tier hits may change. Stats may change. All that. We don't really know. I'm guessing that S4 is out probably in a month or so, give or take. And uh, we're not even sure how many dinars or bullions you can acquire. So... Take this all with a grain of salt, but if you were curious, this is likely where we're starting and what things look like heading into, well, S4. Uh, like always, once again, Week Wars are add-ons, links to Twitch and Discord down below if you want them, they're all for free for you guys. Before I end the video, I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons, for all support on Patreon, like always, thank you a million times, guys, I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, if you're looking at supporting on Patreon, it should be linked up here, as well as down below in the video description. Like I said, I would guess that Alpha is coming out, or sorry, Alpha. Uh, S4 is probably hitting in a month or so, probably end of April. I'm guessing that... My educated guess for Alpha, S4, and all that is likely... I'm going to guess that there's going to be the final set of hero talents hitting next week. Maybe like Wednesday, Thursday. And quite possibly Alpha the week after. Maybe like the week of the 9th. Something like that. Could be earlier, could be later. But uh, they mentioned Alpha's hitting before S4. And S4 is coming out uh, several weeks after Plunderstorm. Which, you know, two weeks ago. So I think end of April lines up pretty well. But uh, yeah. We will see where it goes. All the things said, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll catch you all again soon on stream. Peace.